What if your DNA didn't just connect you to family or ancestors, but to the first humans who ever walked into Europe? That's what makes Italian DNA so extraordinary. It's not just diverse, it's ancient. Some of the genetic markers found in Italy date back tens of thousands of years, long before cities, pyramids, or even the invention of farming. While other European regions were reset by migration after migration, Italy held onto its earliest genes like a time capsule carved in stone. But why did this happen? And how does a modern Italian carry the whispers of Ice Age hunters, Bronze Age farmers, and Roman emperors all at once? We explore how Italian DNA might just be the oldest and most layered genetic story in all of Europe. Before we start, I'm on a mission to reach 10,000 subscribers as a small channel, so if you want to help me, please subscribe. Italy's genetic legacy begins long before Rome, before Pompeii, even before agriculture. Around 45,000 years ago, some of the first Homo sapiens entered Europe through the Southern Corridor, what is now Italy. These early humans left behind tools, cave art, and most importantly, DNA. Haplogroups like U, U5, and U8 found in ancient bones from the region, still exist in modern Italians. These aren't just old. They're among the oldest European genetic lineages ever recorded. Unlike other parts of Europe where early human populations were wiped out or replaced, Italy preserved these ancient strains. The reason? Geography. Italy's mountains, valleys, and mild southern climate offered shelter and food even during harsh Ice Age winters. So while northern populations vanished under glaciers, Italian hunter-gatherers survived. Their DNA endured, generation after generation. Today, every time someone of Italian descent takes a DNA test and sees those ancient markers, they're looking at a living fossil, a direct echo from the dawn of Europe. When Europe froze under the grip of the last glacial maximum around 20,000 years ago, vast swathes of the continent became uninhabitable. Forests turned to tundra, rivers froze, and entire populations were forced south. Italy became one of the few safe zones, a climatic sanctuary that sheltered human life when much of Europe could not. It wasn't just a place of survival, it was a place of preservation. Genetic studies show that people in the Italian peninsula carried the same mitochondrial haplogroups throughout this icy period, meaning families survived in small, stable communities for thousands of years. These populations passed down DNA with minimal interruption, preserving rare lineages that disappeared elsewhere. Haplogroups like U5 and U8A weren't just leftovers, they became signatures of endurance. After the glaciers retreated, these Italian refugees became genetic reseeding zones for Europe. That means some of the DNA found in modern Germans, French and even Brits can trace part of their ancestry back to Ice Age survivors from Italy. In a way, Italy was Europe's beating heart during its coldest chapter. So, if your DNA shows Italian ancestry, it may also be holding the memory of a people who outlasted the Ice Age and helped repopulate a thawing continent. Around 8,000 years ago, another wave of change washed over Italy. Not through invasion, but cultivation. Early farmers arrived from Anatolia, bringing with them livestock, wheat, pottery, and a new way of life. They also brought new genes, haplogroups like J, K and T, that began to mix with the local population. But here's what makes Italy different. The fusion of farmer and forager wasn't a replacement, it was a layering. Instead of one group wiping out the other, the two intermingled, creating a uniquely blended genome. Ancient DNA studies from Neolithic Italian sites reveal this mix clearly. The early hunter-gatherer lineages didn't vanish. They were absorbed, preserved and carried forward. Over generations, Italian populations inherited traits from both sides, the deep resilience of Ice Age survivors and the innovations of early agriculturalists. This genetic continuity is rare in Europe, where many places saw dramatic turnovers in ancestry. In Italy, it was more like adding verses to a song rather than starting a new melody. That's why when scientists analyze Italian DNA today, they see a rich mosaic, not just of who lived there, but how they lived together. It's a slow, continuous evolution, one of the most ancient still traceable in any modern European population. By the time the Bronze Age arrived, Italy was already home to one of the most complex genetic layers in Europe. But then came the Indo-Europeans, migrants from the Pontic Caspian steppe, who brought new languages, tools and genes. The key genetic marker they introduced was the R1B Y chromosome haplogroup, especially the subclade R1 BM269 today, it's the most common male lineage in Western Europe. 
and it reshaped Italy too. But again, Italy's uniqueness shows in how it integrated this new wave. Unlike Northern Europe, where Indo-European genes often replaced earlier ones, Italy absorbed them into an already rich mix. R1b blended with pre-existing Neolithic and Mesolithic lineages, creating local subtypes like R1bu152, which is now strongly associated with Northern and Central Italy. This makes Italy a case study in continuity through complexity. Indo-European influence certainly left a linguistic and cultural mark, Latin being the most famous, but genetically it didn't erase what came before. Instead, it added yet another stratum to the Italian genome. So when Italians today carry both R1b and older mitochondrial haplogroups, they're walking proof of a region that didn't reset. It evolved. The Bronze Age didn't rewrite Italy's DNA. It added new chapters to one of Europe's longest-running genetic books. While much of Europe was still tribal, Italy was already home to advanced civilizations that left lasting genetic footprints. One of the earliest was the Etruscans, a mysterious people whose language still puzzles scholars. Genetic analysis of ancient Etruscan remains shows a continuity with earlier Neolithic and Bronze Age populations in Italy, suggesting they were a homegrown culture, not foreign invaders. Their DNA included mitochondrial haplogroups like K1, J1 and T2, markers still found in Italians today, especially in central regions like Tuscany. Then came the Greeks, starting in the 8th century BCE, they established colonies along the southern Italian coast and in Sicily. An area later known as Magna Graecia, these settlers brought genes from the Aegean and eastern Mediterranean, introducing haplogroups like E1B1B and some subclades of G2A. But again, the genetic effect wasn't overwhelming. It was regional, and it layered on top of what was already there. Southern Italians today often carry a blend of local and Greek-linked markers, a reflection of this ancient Mediterranean melting pot. What makes Italy stand out is that every historical era left its trace, but none completely dominated. The genes of early Greeks and Etruscans didn't replace older Italian DNA. They enriched it, one civilization at a time. The Roman Empire was the most powerful and diverse empire of its time, stretching from Britain to North Africa to the Middle East. You might expect that such a vast political machine would flood Italy with foreign DNA, but here's the twist. While Rome welcomed people from every corner of the known world, the core Italian genome remained remarkably stable. Genetic studies of ancient Roman remains, especially in cities like Rome itself, show a swirl of Mediterranean, North African and Near Eastern ancestry. But outside major cities, especially in rural and mountainous areas, the genetic continuity from earlier Italian populations held firm. Regions like Umbria, Tuscany and Calabria preserved the old signatures, showing little disruption across millennia. So even though the Roman Empire turned Italy into a global crossroads, the DNA story isn't one of dilution, it's one of resilience. The empire expanded, collapsed and changed the world, but deep inside, Italian DNA kept telling its original story. To find some of the most ancient and untouched DNA in Europe, look to Italy's islands and highlands. Sardinia, for example, is a genetic time capsule. The island's population has remained relatively isolated for thousands of years, preserving Neolithic and even pre-Neolithic lineages that have vanished elsewhere. Haplogroups like I2A1A and G2A2 are unusually frequent here, markers directly tied to Europe's first farmers and Mesolithic tribes. In the north, small alpine communities in the Dolomites and Apennines also retain rare genetic profiles, shaped by centuries of geographic isolation and low migration. Even tiny islands off the coast like Elba or the Aeolian Islands harbour localised DNA clusters that trace back to ancient roots. These micro-refugia act like frozen pockets in genetic time, offering scientists a chance to study what Europe may have looked like thousands of years ago. If Italian DNA is a museum of human history, then these secluded places are its oldest and most fragile exhibits, preserved not by design, but by geography and tradition. In the last 150 years, more than 25 million Italians left their homeland, carrying with them more than language and cuisine. They carried DNA rooted in the Stone Age. Today, descendants of those migrants live across North and South America, Australia and beyond, many unaware that their bloodline reaches back tens of thousands of years.
DNA testing has revealed that even third or fourth generation Italian Americans often still carry rare haplogroups from Sardinia, Tuscany or Calabria. Some carry ancient R1B subclades linked to Bronze Age migrations, others retain maternal lines that have persisted since Neolithic times. What's remarkable is how much of that deep ancestry remains intact. Despite oceans and centuries of movement, Italian DNA continues to show the same regional signatures, whispers of Etruscans, early farmers, and Ice Age clans encoded in every cell. The diaspora didn't erase this history, it extended it, allowing Italian genes to tell their ancient story on a global stage. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Italian DNA isn't just ancestry, it's a living fossil. A preserved biological archive of Europe's earliest humans passed down quietly, generation after generation. It's not just old, it's immortal.